감정적인 그런 것과 사랑과 어릴 때를 놓아주는 당신의 능력과 It's my last day here in the hometown and tomorrow I leave on my big journey to Santa Cruz where I will be living in a permaculture community <laughs> called Cosmic Dance. Tonight I need a pack. We just had spring rolls and watermelon and now we're having some tea, some white tea. Cheers. Okay, you can wait. It's a little too hot for Jaden. You can blow on it. I'm very grateful for this house. And it's nice to have moved back in, but with an entirely new perspective on life. A perspective of gratitude and acceptance and a mission. I am traversing the land. I am going north and the land is very yellow and I'm learning to love the yellow and I'm learning to love all this trash that's on this ground right here and the chain gas stations and restaurants that the five north provides it's all just it's all just here nothing nothing I need to change you know I do need to accept the way things are on this earth right now, but sometimes I want there to be some kind of revolution or a huge shift. And I guess that shift happens within me and with love. It's with remembrance. I was listening to Emergence Magazine on my drive here and um, I got reminders to always continuously remember. I'm not sure what to remember, but to remember what's important. I realized I forgot something. I forgot some block. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Uh, maybe I'll just get skin cancer. That's kind of, I'm like wondering what did humans do before sunblock was invented? We just got skin cancer or the sun wasn't this harsh? That's my question. I'm passing by this huge reservoir and it's beautiful and the hills are all so yellow and there's yeah there's a lot to, there's a lot going on there's some landscaping going on and i think this is a state park it's the san luis creek reservoir state park
I am here at Cosmic Dance Permaculture and yesterday I settled in and I chose this spot near a stump so this is my new room. Welcome to my room. Room tour. Here it is. The tree house is right over there and I'm gonna do some yoga before I start the day. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be here. It is really, really cool. There is so much food and trees. The trees are really, really tall. And I think I'm going to learn a lot while being here. I honestly want to stay for longer than a month and a half. After yoga, I think I'm going to go eat breakfast and then we're going to start working on stuff for five hours and then. I'll have the rest of the day to do whatever I want. Mama? Oh. Uh. It's been a dream of mine to be able to hold a handstand since I was really little. And now I'm actually working towards that dream. And I've been practicing as much as I can. And I've been seeing progress. I've been able to hold it for like two seconds. <laughs> and my arms are getting stronger and my scapulas are getting stronger and I think my core is getting stronger so I'm very excited to continue and enjoy the journey as I progress towards holding it. That's the hilarious. Who's that? When you're just scrolling and you get hit with the... It's Friday, baby! That's what's funny. That's what's funny. That's what's funny. We talk about, we finish something, we look at it, we go, where is the before picture? It's insane. Every time. <laughs> it's before cool, picture is like, oh. Mm -hmm. Progress. The gardens next year are going to be like extreme. Mm-hmm. Are you guys some meat eating hoes? What's hey, happening? Hey, mm -hmm. Never taken before before. They're all meat. Shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp? This year versus yeah. next year. But and me. Insane. Is it shrimp Wait, and, and me? Yeah, it's shrimp. What? You couldn't make some of them just shrimp? Mm -hmm. Until like, it like, half a cup absorbed, half a cup absorbed. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a fox that one piece. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much like push the fire in the fox. Uh, I don't know if they were there at the same time. Maybe they were friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've seen it. Whoa. Whoa. That was probably was Miss Peach. That was probably Nala. 
Oh, you brought three cats? Long no, the other mm -hmm. cat has been there. Sweet. You have to eat it now. <laughs> Take a whole wheat, a whole flower? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The flowers taste really good. You should try one. Maybe you can put one of these in. Two. Bigger than your face. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a face this big. You don't sell in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Just one is good? How much? What are we going to do with it? I think we can chop it up. I think just one, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we put tomatoes in the salad and cucumbers. and We can put some flowers in there too. Oh. Yeah. That sounds so good. I need to buy some more. sitting next to a mushroom. It looks like it's been eaten, but it looks like it wasn't too yummy. I'm here at Sumag State Park. It's a few hours north of Santa Cruz. I tagged along with Emily and her friends on their trip to the Redwood National Park. And yeah, we're gonna be here for a week in this camp spot. And it's by the ocean. I feel a little shy vlogging in front of new people. Hence why I'm whispering and talking so quietly. But I'm sure I'll open up and enjoy this place. It's very mossy and there's not too many mosquitoes. Lighthouse. It's my first lighthouse that I've ever been to. And every 26 seconds, the light goes on for three seconds, 24 hours a day. It's really beautiful. Um, I've been thinking about my intuition and I don't know. I don't know what to do with my intuition. I don't know what it's telling me, I don't know what my heart is telling me, but I think time alone is necessary to be in tune with your intuition, and I haven't had that in a while, so I'm going to probably take tomorrow to do that with myself.
but the Redwood Coast is really beautiful. We explored a fall, a waterfall hike, and saw elk and really big trees. And wow, this area of California is really beautiful. So I'm not in Santa Cruz anymore. Um, I left and I'm back here, my hometown. And um, no, it hasn't been a month. I was planning to stay there for a month and a half, but things sometimes don't go as planned and that's okay. I've realized that living sustainably doesn't mean that I really have to go live in a commune off-grid, in the forest, in a tent. I thought I was ready to give up all the conveniences of normal living because I've done it when I go camping or backpacking, but those were all having an expectation that you'll be going home. and. I realized I just wasn't ready to give it up. I just have a lot of goals right now of planning for a long through hike in the John Muir Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail. And I just didn't have Wi-Fi there and I didn't have a desk. And I didn't realize how hard it would be to have very, very limited internet connection. And I was only there for three days. And so, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. And when I was trying to continue my yoga practice, I was just, I didn't know where to do it. There was like no level ground anywhere except in a tree house. And it was just all so hard to just do the small things. And I was getting bit by mosquitoes every other, every five minutes. And I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't take it. I fully realized why shelters have closed windows and closed doors. It's because mosquitoes, <laughs> because bugs, because the sun gets hot. And I don't know, I thought I could live minimally and with the earth and I'll, I'll feel very comfortable and happy with a little, but I just, I realized I wasn't ready for that. And I think that's okay. I think there will be a time in my life when I could try that life again, but right now I think it, I, it felt right for me to come back home and have that week and a half that I spent in Santa Cruz and the Redwoods and in San Francisco as just a, a little trip and not a long-term stay. And so things don't go as planned sometimes and I'm always learning that my path isn't just set up by my expectations, but it's set up by my every present moment intuition of what I want to do and what I'm drawn towards. And if it doesn't feel right, then you don't have to keep doing it. Even though I was only at, at Cosmic Dance for three days, it was really cool to see that space and how the land isn't divvied up by hierarchy and of people controlling other people but it was all a shared space with no authority really you, you're kind of learning from everybody there but no one's fully in charge of you so you're fully in charge of yourself even though you have no idea what's going on and you have to constantly ask questions and you don't have like a direct mentor and i and i guess you can search for one yourself but it's a lot to do and I don't think I was ready to take that on and really be communicating with like 10 people every day on what this what we should do and things that I will be up to and updating them it was just a lot and living together um 
I think it's a really great way of living, but I just, yeah, I wasn't ready for it. My belief that mosquitoes are evil still remains true. <laughs> just kidding. They're not evil. I'm just really delicious to them, apparently. Something I also have been realizing after whiffing in two different places is that you can't be perfect. You can't be self-sufficient 100%. You can't be sustainable 100%. Living in these farms and communes and permaculture whatevers, everyone still uses a car. Everyone still goes to the groceries to get bulk food and goes to Costco and produces trash and eats frozen pizzas still. Like, I thought that I'd go there and just for some reason fully be zero waste and I'd be living such a sustainable and perfect life. Well, I knew I would, I don't know, I just didn't know what to expect. And like realizing that we can't fully detach ourselves from society and there's, and I don't know, it's just to be grateful for whatever it is that we have in place, like a grocery store that provides us with bulk cheese and bulk and oat milk and delicious chips and snacks like i don't know what to think anymore i'd ideally like to go zero waste someday but that also entails purchasing silicone reusable things and i don't know you can't i i i can't just go and live in a cave and be content. I don't know if that's my life path. I thought I could. I really thought I could. But just having no Wi-Fi, I realized how much I depended on the internet for the things that I cook and the things that I plan for my future and not having somewhere to sit without mosquitoes biting me was literally driving me insane. And not having my own space where I can stand up and not get bitten by mosquitoes was like crazy. I just couldn't do it. I was going a little nuts. Um, so those are my thoughts. Um, thank you for journeying with me all the way to Santa Cruz and back. I'm going to appreciate having my conveniences and yeah, everything is a learning experience and it's okay to not go with through with your expectations of what the future was going to be like. Yeah. I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.